to threaten my livelihood and therefore threaten the way I provide for my children to have a secure home and to be able to progress to adulthood successfully is not only distasteful, but it's the ultimate example of being what we are trying to prevent. That's a bully. But I'm not in high school, nor am I unsure of my way of life. And for my children, myself, and what I truly believe is the majority of the residents of Franklin County, I will not be browbeaten, threatened, or bullied into compromising my values or belief systems. With that being said, I will make the motion that this board adopt policy 6.702. Okay, we have a motion, uh, motion to adopt uh, policy 6.702, which is the uh, student clubs and organizations. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to adopt uh, 6.702. No discussion. I'd like to make a statement. I express my views on a particular aspect of this policy um, at our last board meeting and at our last work session. Um, I don't think anyone present here probably doubts my views on that. Um, I think there's a I think there's a lot of good in this policy. However, there's one particular aspect which prevent, prevents me from supporting this policy. I explained my reasons at the, uh, at the last uh, work session last week, and I asked members of the board to consider my viewpoint, my, my position on it, and my rationale. I also listened to their rationales for creating an opt-in policy. For those of you who are familiar with what the opt-in policy means, secondary school student who wanted to participate in a club or organization would have to get written permission from their parent or legal guardian. That is different from the current policy, which is an opt-out. The opt-out policy is established by Tennessee state law. That law has existed for three years. That opt-out <coughs> policy that opt-out requirement, again, that is mandated by state law, requires that the school publish a list of clubs and afford, afford parents or legal guardians an opportunity to prohibit their child from participating in any particular activity. I don't believe there's a problem with the opt-out policy. <coughs> and I believe that the proposed change from an opt-out to an opt-in policy is a flawed attempt to correct a problem that doesn't exist. As board members, as is stated in our board policies, each of us has individually taken on the responsibility to think at all times in terms of children first and to decide all matters of policy how they affect the education and training of children. The opt-out provision of the proposed policy, however, in my humble opinion, is not in the best interest of children who attend Franklin County Schools. Beyond that, I have serious questions about whether it's within our legal authority to adopt this policy. I listened to the arguments presented by my fellow board members at last week's work session. The primary rationales that have been offered in support of this change are that it would reduce the school district's legal exposure in the event that a student was injured during a club meeting or event, and that it is necessary to ensure that parents have a say in deciding the types of activities in which their child participates. Neither of these rationales are supported by the evidence. First, on the question of legal risk. Let me make clear that what we are talking about here is not a permission slip to go on a club-related field trip. That's an activity that I believe does warrant securing parental permission. Rather, what we are talking about here is a permission slip to attend a meeting on school grounds either before or after school. 
whether it is to run school property, whether it is to go to class, or to participate in a before or after school activity, a school and its employees have a legal obligation to provide students adequate supervision and to protect the student's health and safety. Under state law, that obligation is the same regardless of whether a student's parents have consented to the student's participation in an extracurricular activity at the school, or whether they have not. Requiring a permission slip does not make students safer, nor does it reduce the school system's legal risk. Second, in terms of parental involvement, as I previously stated, current state law affords an adequate means for parents to control the types of non-curricular activities in which their child participates. Parents are notified of the types of clubs that exist at the school, and they are advised of their right to communicate to their, chi their child's school that their child is prohibited from participating in a particular extracurricular activity. Both Franklin County High School and Huntley School comply with this law by notifying parents of this right in the school student parent handbooks and by publishing a list of clubs in those handbooks and on the school's websites. I have served on the Franklin County School Board for a little over 18 months. During that time, no one, no parent, teacher, administrator, student, or school board member has suggested to me and to my knowledge to anyone on the school board that these state mandated requirements are inadequate. Likewise, no one has expressed any concern that the county schools were not complying with this law. That is, not until a gay straight alliance was formed by students at Franklin County High School earlier this year. So what is the problem? Why is a policy change necessary? After students formed the GSA at Franklin County High School, a small but very vocal percentage of the community bombarded school board members with emails and letters demanding that the board ban the GSA. This was their right to do that. That right is protected by the First Amendment. Some even went so far as demanding that the board ban any student club from meeting on the school property. Again, that is their First Amendment right to do that. However, the board has not responded to those demands because I believe the members of this board recognized that prohibiting all non-academic clubs would not have been in the students' best interest and because such action would have embroiled the school district in a costly federal lawsuit that it was unlikely to win. Mm -hmm. I don't mean to suggest at all that the members of this board, and certainly not the majority of these members of this board, have a principled opposition to the existence of the GSA at Franklin County High School. What I am suggesting, though, do not question this. We would not be talking about this policy but for the formation of the GSA at Franklin County High School. A person's choice to join or associate with a particular organization is a right protected by the First Amendment and is well established that this right is not just limited to adults but it is a right afforded to children, especially high school students. And like other constitutional freedoms, children do not leave their rights to freedom of speech at the schoolhouse gate. Rather, students have the right to express their opinions and associate with students who share their viewpoints. And a school may only restrict this right where the expressive activity in question will cause a substantial disruption of or material interference with school activities. Or will it will unreasonably impinge or harm the rights of other students. Or where the speech is lewd or where the speech advocates violence for the consumption of illegal drugs. In other words, a school must have a compelling interest to limit student speech. This is not just grounded in the law, not just grounded in our Constitution, but it's grounded in our mission as an educational entity. It's grounded in the role of public schools. 
exercise, a student's exercise of their free speech rights and freedom of association is a critical means by which students can develop and express their identity as young adults and future voters, voting citizens in our democratic form of government. In cases involving a minor's rights, the law looks for first to what is in the best interest of a child. In making this determination, a judge usually gives great weight to the minor's view as to what is the best for him or her, but it still weighs, the, weighs that, that opinion against the view of other actors involved, including child's parents, and where schools are involved, school administrators and the school board. Parents have a constitutionally protected liberty interest, a right protected under the 14th Amendment to decide how to raise their children. <coughs> and in most cases, the law presumes that parents are acting in the children's best interest. Under the law, however, that presumption is rebutted. And we would be naive to believe that parents always consider or fully understand what is in the best interest of their children. <clears throat> Clearly, the opt-in policy places a parent's constitutional rights at odds with the student's rights under the First Amendment. But what is the school board's interest here? Whatever it is, I submit to you it is not a compelling or an important one. Beyond protecting the rights of others, students, and preventing the substantial disruption of activities, our interest is quite limited. Now, while schools have an interest in teaching values, that interest alone cannot justify limiting a child's First Amendment rights. The U.S. Supreme Court has held that local school boards may not, re for example, local school boards may not remove books from school libraries just simply because they dislike the ideas contained in those books and seek by their removal to prescribe what shall be orthodox in politics, nationalism, religion, or other matters of opinion. Removing controversial books delegitimizes minority view, view values and goals that can conflict with majoritarian community values. A community's desire to protect children from moral danger does not justify reducing children's First Amendment rights. Nonconformity with majority views is not in and of itself a danger. What does this policy do? The proposed policy. The school board cannot limit the speech of students directly. Instead, the proposed policy would enlist parents to do that job. But we can't piggyback on the rights of parents to facilitate something that the school board cannot do itself in the first instance. We cannot limit free speech by simply appealing to the governmental interest, a governmental interest in meeting parental authority. Rather, to pass constitutional muster, we must be able to demonstrate the policy promotes a compelling or at least substantial government interest. It is not motivated by the intent to suppress speech by the school board or by parents and is narrowly tailored to promote the government interest. In my view, neither the proposed opt-in policy nor the arguments offered by members of this board satisfy these requirements. For those reasons, I will be voting against this policy. Any other discussion? Okay, we have a motion and a second to adopt this policy. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Nay. Motion carries. Okay, policy 6.702, club organization criteria. 